we're going to calculate the protons, neutrons, and electrons for each of these cases. Okay? So, let's start with, quote, the easiest one. That would be uranium 6 plus. So, you look at your periodic table. You find the atomic number. And that would be 92. And that's the number of what? So we have 92 protons. How many electrons would we have? 86. Yeah, 6 less than 92 because it's plus 6. That means we're missing 6 electrons. So let me see, 86 neutrons. Uh, now, it depends which isotope of uranium you have. So let's say this is uranium-238, which is a pretty common isotope. So that is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So if I 238 minus 92, what's that number? 146. 146. OK. So there's the protons, neutrons, electrons there. Let's do the more difficult one now. CO2, one molecule of CO2. Let's start with protons. That is, how many protons for carbon? Six. Six from the periodic table. How about oxygen? Eight for each, double that, 16. So 16 plus six for carbon, that's 22. How many electrons in one molecule of CO2? 22. 22 because it's neutral. So, okay, now we have to add up all the uh, mass numbers. So for carbon, that's 12. For oxygen, that's 16. 2 times 16 is 32 because there's two oxygens. So 32 for the two oxygens. And 12 for carbon, that's 44. 44 for the total minus the total number of protons. So there's 22 protons, 22 neutrons. In fact, you're going to notice for anything that's going to have an atomic number of 20 or less, usually the protons and neutrons will be equal. As it gets bigger, there will be more neutrons, not less. Um, pretty much never less. And you'll see there's more neutrons here. You need more neutrons to stabilize the overwhelming positive charge in the nucleus. So as things get bigger, you need lots and lots of neutrons. Okay, now let's get crazier. Let's do NH3. Let's, we're going to do it for a mole of NH3, but just to warm up a little bit, let's first do it for one, mo one molecule of NH3. For one molecule of NH3, nitrogen contributes how many protons? Seven. Seven from the periodic table. NH hydrogen? Three. One. 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 Total of three. So you're, you're going crazy on the math here. So seven plus three, ten. I'll just put that in a little tiny in parentheses here. Oh, that's seven. Ten. So in parentheses, I'm writing it just for the molecule. How about electrons? Ten. Ten. And for neutrons, we need the total. So for nitrogen, 14. And for hydrogen, one. There's no neutrons in hydrogen. So what does that up to be? 14 plus another 3, 17. OK. So how many neutrons? Seven. Seven. OK. Those are just for one molecule. How do I change that to a mole? You got to multiply Avogadro's number. So for this one, it's 10 times Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the what? 23rd. 23rd. Well, times 10 is to the 24th. Okay. You can check your calculator if you're not sure. And so this would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Times 10 is 24. And this one, if you can do it at home, but it would be 7 times Avogadro's number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. 
So those would be the amount of protons, neutrons, electrons in one mole of NH3. Let's try one more. I'll erase the top one. Let's try one molecule of sulfate. Or I should say one ion, really. One ion of sulfate. So sulfur contributes how much for the protons? 16. 16. Each oxygen contributes 8. So 8 times 4. 32 plus another 16. Is that 48? How about electrons? You gotta add two to that, yeah, because it's two minus, so 50. Okay, now let's do the crazy adding one for the neutrons. Sulfur contributes 32, and oxygen 16. So 16 times 4 is 64, plus another 32 is? 96. Uh, oh, that's on the whole, that's 96 minus 48. What's that? Okay, does that all make sense? Any questions?